Hi, Todd Dunn here on September 19, 2018. Today I'm aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga and uh, I'm doing a little work on the boat, just uh, cosmetic really. I'm going to clean out under the engine a little bit. But as part of that, I thought I'd show you the power plant. When I bought this boat in 2007, the engine that it had in it was a 1948 vintage Chrysler Crown M47S Flathead 6, which is about 110 horsepower, six-cylinder engine. With the reversing gear, that engine weighed over a thousand pounds. It also was seized. I was unable to turn it over by putting my breaker bar on the crank. So, the very first thing I did when I got the boat was I actually paid somebody, and this is the only thing I paid anybody to do in my rebuild of the boat. I paid someone to yank that Chrysler Crown engine out of the boat, and once that was done, I gave the engine away. So, I always intended when I bought the boat to repower it with a modern diesel engine. In addition to being heavy. That particular engine was big. It stuck up quite a bit and had some other negative features. So let's take a look at the engine space now and uh, see what we can see. Okay, this is where the engine is underneath these two panels in the cabin sole. And up here is uh, just a bulkhead. The engine used to extend from the aft end of these two panels forward and through the bulkhead by about a foot and a half. And there was an additional cabinet in there to cover up the engine. The forward panel here, right there, uh, didn't exist. Instead, there was a, a doghouse that extended up about 16 inches uh, over the top of the engine and had a flat surface you could put stuff on. So when I got rid of that, one of the first things I did was to build a new panel to drop in there. So that panel you see there uh, with the uh, metal finger loop in it, I built uh, within a couple of weeks of getting the boat. I'm going to open that up now and we'll take a look at the engine. Here's the engine I put in. This is a Volvo Penta D240 diesel engine. It's a 40 horsepower diesel engine and uh, it has a 2.63 to 1 down angle transmission on the back of it. And as you can see, it's a lot shorter than the five foot long engine that was in there. And one of the reasons I picked this particular engine was that it sits below the cabin sole here so that I can have a flush cabin sole. Doesn't fit much below it, but it's about an inch. Here is the bottom of that panel and the bottom of the back panel. There's two inches of sound down insulation in there and the entire engine compartment is surrounded by two inches of sound down insulation to cut down on engine noise. And at 2000 RPMs, Standing right above the engine, you can carry on a normal conversation. Don't have to speak up at all. It's that quiet. And outside the boat, you basically don't hear the engine at all. So it's a pretty simple setup. Just a diesel engine. It's connected to a water heater on the other side of the bulkhead there. I have dual Raycor 500MA fuel filters which can be switched from one to the other. And I also have a switchable return because I have two fuel tanks, one on each side of the boat. So I can pick up fuel out of the port tank and return it to the starboard tank, which transfers fuel while running it through the fuel filters, or I can pick up from the starboard tank and go into the port tank or back into the starboard tank. And also I can, by switching two valves, change the primary fuel filter from one to the other. So if I have an issue with a dirty filter, it just takes a second to switch the valves over, which you can do while the engine is running, and you have a clean filter. And I always keep 
uh, at least one of the filters clean. So that's it. Very simple little engine. Runs very well. It's a 2011 vintage. It's got about 300 hours on it now. It starts right up and uh, is, with the hatches closed, quite quiet. So I'm going to crawl down in there and pull an oil sorbent pad from under the engine and replace it. And that's what I'm here for today. But I don't think you'll want to watch me doing that. So just wanted to show you the power plant on my 1936 Noons Brothers raised deck cruiser. This 40 horsepower engine will push the boat at 7 knots at 2,000 RPMs and wide open at 3,000 RPMs will push the boat at 9 knots. The throttle and shifting are controlled by a single lever control there. I'm a little disappointed in that it uh, isn't very period looking, but I like single lever controls. And that's a Morse single lever, lever control. So basically, let's see if I can get here without falling in the hole. To go forward, put it in gear, more throttle. There's neutral. That's reverse, and put it in gear and push down for more throttle. If I want to just run the throttle, I push that red button in right there, and I have just throttle pops back out when you get into neutral. I really like a single lever control because I can keep one hand on the wheel and control both throttle and shifting with the other hand. Up here are the engine controls. These aren't all engine controls. This is part of my uh, automatic fire extinguishing system. This is a Fireboy automatic fire extinguishing system. If that discharges, it shuts the engine off and you can flip this switch to override that so that you can restart the engine after a discharge of the onboard uh, fixed fire extinguishing system. This is my windlass control for up and down. Windlass is up there on the bow. There's a circuit breaker on the side of the pedestal here. And so I can, when I decide I want to anchor, I've got a self-launching anchor. I just have to flick this into the down position and the anchor goes down. I don't have to go forward to do it. And this boat's a little tricky to get forward on, which is why it's set up that way. The rest of this, these four controls are all engine controls. This is the electronic control module for it. On off switch, start button. This is a mute in case one of the alarms goes off and this is the stop button. Here we've got an alter, uh, a voltmeter that's connected to the batteries and so you can see where your voltages are when you're running, a temperature gauge, and a tachometer. And in the window here in the tachometer you can get lots of other information. Uh, it's normally just engine hours but you can cycle through and display a lot of other engine information. So that's it. These are standard Volvo Penta controls that came with the engine that I mounted on the mahogany panel here so that it would fit. And steering is controlled with this uh, bronze wheel. It's a cable steering and that's all there is to it. Bronze wheel with teak hand grips. I need to take the hand grips off and varnish them. And that's a kind of nasty job that I'll do one of these days. <laughs> so, other equipment that I have on board is I have a VHF radio here, which is very convenient. And the only other instrumentation I have on board is a depth sounder. This is actually a low-end Apelco fish finder. It came with the boat. I probably wouldn't have picked it. And in this box here, if I can get it open, there we go, is the, is the compass, which you can see there. And it's quite nice. It's uh, fully gimbaled and works very well, although I hardly ever use it. <laughs> and that pretty much covers it. So there's our engine again. And I just wanted to show it to you. If you enjoyed the look, 
give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. I look forward to uh, having you see more of my videos. Thanks for watching.